Hello, I'm Dave. Welcome to my Technical Notes channel. In this tech note, I'll look at the more advanced features of interrupts and some of the directives you need to employ to make sure they're reliable. So you probably will have seen some of these words here. iCache RAM attribute, volatile dynamic RAM attribute, port enter critical, port exit critical. So I'll go through some of those. Next, let's look at a, a straightforward sketch, which is an interrupt based sketch that flashes an LED when a GPIO pin changes state either 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. And what happens is the function called blink is called when the interrupt takes place and that inverts the state of a variable called state. So if it was 100, it becomes 0 and vice versa. So to make sure it's a reliable interrupt routine, you've got to make sure that you declare the interrupt variables used, in this case state, so you've got to call it a volatile. Why do you need to call it volatile? That tells the compiler to place the variable into RAM and not use a processor storage register. Why? Because during an interrupt, processor storage registers can be used for other purposes. So it's just making the routine reliable. The next thing you need to do um, is to make sure you place the interrupt service routine into uh, a different section of storage. In this case, the recommended area is the instruction RAM, IRAM. And you do that by prefixing your interrupt service routine with our cache RAM attribute. And so in the bottom right hand corner, there are three blocks. The first block is without using the attribute. So blink is included in flash memory. And then after using the iCache RAM attribute, the, not, the most part of the program remains in flash, but the, the one that you directed to be moved to IRAM, in this case blink, gets transferred over into instruction RAM. So again, makes it more reliable. For the ESP32, placing the interrupt routine in instruction RAM is very similar. In this case, the attribute is called IRAM ATRI. So similar, but different to the ESP8266. And just to keep remembering that uh, the ISR, the interrupt service routine, can't generally call another function unless that too is also placed in instruction RAM, but also improves speed of operation by doing so. For the ESP32, again, to get maximum reliability in your programs, you, you should make sure that uh, having placed your variables into volatile state, so they're in RAM, and place the interrupt service routine into instruction RAM, you should synchronize what's called synchronize in expressive parlance, the modification of variables, and you do that by placing a macro or function called port enter critical when you go into the service routine and port exit critical when you come out of the service routine and there's a special type called port multiplex that's been created to help you do that and uh, that keeps everything synchronized when the program is running because there are other interrupts occurring as well any of which may corrupt the memory. So in summary then, interrupts are definitely a very powerful function you can add to programs, but the modification of any variables needs special consideration. However, the IDE does provide tools to manage variables when you're inside an interrupt service routine. And the ESP32 and ESP8266 are 
similar but different and they both need different techniques to manage the interrupt service routines and I've covered those today. I hope you find this useful. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful. 